about the Advent and Christmas season. <coughs> it is from The Unsettling Season by Donald Shelby. Lord, the calendar calls for Christmas to come again. We have traveled this way before. During the Advent season, we would see what we have never seen before, except what we have refused <clears throat> to think and hear what we need to understand. Be with us in our goings that we may meet you in your coming. Astonish us until we sing glory, and then enable us to live it out with love, with peace, in the name of your incarnate word, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Christmas Eve, it's finally here. 
We're impatient to hear the whole story. Just slow us down, Lord, as we hear Mary say yes to God's good news. Help us to remember that God also continually calls us all to be those who will bear the good news to those in need. Forgive us when we forget to do that. Heal our wounds and bind up our spirits. Enable us to go into your world, offering our lives, our gifts, and our talents for your glory. As we come before you with concerns on our hearts for our family, our friends, the state of the world, just remind us that your presence is with us always and your healing love comforts and restores us. Open our hearts and our ears to the cries of those in need. Let us use all of our resources and gifts and abilities to help others. Give us courage, energy, and enthusiasm as we work for you in this world. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, whose birth we celebrate. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy life is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. face to shine when he suddenly stopped as he stitched the twine. He said, old friends, at dawn today when the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me and said, I'm coming, your guest to be. So I've been busy and feet of stir, strewing my shop with branches of fir. The table is spread and the kettle is shined and over the rafters the holly is twined. Now I'll wait for my Lord to appear, then listen closely so I will hear his step as he nears my humble door, and I'll open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day he had known. 
well, long since his family had passed away and Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest, this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart with, and with every sound he would rise with a start and look for the Lord to be at his door like the vision he had had a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby old beggar whose shoes were torn and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched and he went to the door and he said, you know, your feet must be frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you and the coat that will keep you warmer too. So with grateful heart, the man went away. But Conrad noticed the time of day and wondered what made the Lord so late and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock, he ran to the door, but it was only a stranger once more. A bent old lady with a shawl of black, with a bundle of kindling piled on her back and asked for only a place to rest. But that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on Christmas Day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay for he saw that the hours were slipping away and the Lord hadn't come as he said he would. Then Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. When out of the stillness he heard a cry, Please help me and tell me where am I? So again he opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before he was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. Again Conrad's heart was heavy and sad, but he knew he should make this little girl glad. So he called her in and wiped her tears of and quieted her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more, but as he entered his own darkened door, he knew the Lord was not coming today. For the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and knelt down to pray, and he said, Dear Lord, why did you delay? What, happened? what kept you from coming to call on me? For I so wanted so much your face to see. When soft in the silence a voice he heard, lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor, and three times I came to your lonely door. I was a beggar with bruised cold feet, and I was a woman you gave something to eat, and I was a child on a homeless street. Three times I knocked, and three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best, and I was honored to be your Christmas guest. Amen. Amen. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. 
For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the <coughs> Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. So Pam, Pam read it for us from the uh, traditional Christmas story of Christ's birth from Luke's gospel, but I'm going to look uh, at Matthew's gospel just briefly this morning. And Matthew starts off uh, like this. A record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. So that's how Matthew starts his gospel. Our family name, our ancestors, and, and probably our past doesn't mean as much to us as, as it probably used to. But there was a time, especially in the South, when, when uh, people might ask about an unfamiliar person, who, who are their people? Who is, his, who, who is this guy's people? Where did he come from? And that question's about identity. It's about trying to figure out the mystery of another person by discovering where they came from. Who were their ancestors? Are they new to this area? Are they related to somebody that I know? Uh, uh, do their roots run deep? Uh, we were talking before uh, the service, Kenny and Joan, and I forget how Joan said it, but you better be careful who you talk about because they're probably related to, to somebody around here. Um, so asking who somebody's people are sometimes has a negative side. Uh, Will Willman tells a story about a high-class South Carolina lady who said, what do you expect from someone whose people were a bunch of ex-convicts from England? And she was talking about Jimmy Carter uh, after he had kind of fallen out of favor. Uh, and his roots in Georgia, because Georgia was started as a prison colony to, to rehabilitate uh, debtors and, and prisoners. And this lady classified anybody from Georgia as being those people. Uh, that's who their people were. So St. Matthew is concerned here in this first chapter about his readers knowing who Jesus' people were. The writer of Matthew doesn't even call his book a gospel, but a record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. And he begins with an odd genealogical list of Jesus' people. Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judah, and so on and so on. And you think with all that begetting, it might be a little more exciting, but it's, it's kind of a dull beginning to Matthew. <coughs> a lot of times when people read Matthew, they just skip over all that, and they skip down and start with verse 18, which says this is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. Uh, so we might question, why, why care about our ancestors, or why care about Jesus' ancestors? Let's get on with the story and stop wasting time with all these people from the Old Testament, these patriarchs and matriarchs. And it's sort of an odd genealogy that Matthew tells us. Several of those that are listed in Jesus' genealogy, we don't know anything about. They aren't even in the Old Testament. They're just found here on this list. So they don't even rate a footnote in the mighty acts of God. And it's also odd because the family line is passed down through the mail. Um, but the ancestry of Jesus lists several women, lists four women, and they're women with a story. Tamar, who tricked her father-in-law into fathering a child with her. Rahab the harlot, who helped the Hebrew spies in the city of Jericho. Ruth, a foreigner that we learned about not too long ago. Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, whom David lusted after and then conspired, uh, took as his wife after he conspired to kill her husband. 
or have her husband killed. It would have been helpful if Matthew had been a bit more discreet and maybe chosen some more reputable women right. to, to mention in his list of, of Jesus' ancestors. If we dig far enough, we probably all have somebody in our family tree, maybe a third cousin, that we wouldn't want <laughs> listed in our genealogy. Maybe a few Tamars or Rahabs. It seems, it seems a shame that Matthew had to drag those people into this nice Christmas story. Why does he have to announce Jesus' birth? By bringing in women like this or, or flawed men like Isaac or Jacob the trickster and, and David who uh, uh, committed adultery with, with Bathsheba, among other things. Back in Genesis, old Abram had been told, I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. And this verse is the key to Matthew's odd family tree there of Jesus. All the people that he lists are part of God's promise to bless all the families of the earth. Uh, all the families of, of God through Abraham's covenant family. All of these people were part of the promise fulfilled by the baby who Matthew calls the son of David, the son of Abraham. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Uriah's wife Bathsheba were not the typical people you would lift up as having in your family tree. Some of them failed to meet the moral standards of their time. They were victims, others were victims of a male-dominated culture that was known for abusing women unless they were protected by powerful men. But these women were instruments of God's promise to Abraham. They kept that promise alive, sometimes by their wit, by their conniving, their common sense, their courage, and whatever else it took. In their willingness to be part of the covenant, these improbable saints were the forerunners of Jesus' mother Mary, who we could consider to be the first disciple. <coughs> Father Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ram, Amenadab, Nashon, Asa, Joseph, along with Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba were all members of Jesus' family. His great-great-grandpas and grandmas in the faith. And for all their weaknesses and shortcomings, this, they were a motley crew, but a, a richly human crew. And they were the answer when people asked, who were Jesus' people? Matthew seems to say to his readers, you may know a lot about Jesus, but you don't know the whole story of this Messiah until you hear the whole story of Israel. This is why God's promises, this is the way God's promises are fulfilled. Not by angels dropping down out of the sky, not by the saints that we wish to God we were or that we were related to, uh, but by people like us and our ancestors, the Tamars, Ruth, Jacobs, Davids of this world. There would be no salvation without them because they were a big part of this story of God's promise. Of course, we don't like to think of it that way. We, we may spend a lot of our adult lives trying to distance ourselves from our own past, from our families, our past, the eccentricities of our family growing up. We, we try to grow up and maybe put some of that behind us, leave home, go away to college or, or training of some sort, try to rise above our roots. We want to choose the lives we lead to be self-reliant, self-made, and liberated. And we may be embarrassed when Uncle, I didn't think about Charlie, it says Uncle Charlie. When, when Uncle Charlie and Aunt Agnes, or in my case it was Uncle Pooley and Aunt Nettie, uh, show up. Because then our friends find out who our people are and where our roots lie. But not Jesus, Matthew says. He embraces that sordid, questionable family tree, seeing himself as part of the promise made to them and through them. The first time Jesus stood in a pulpit, the congregation of his hometown sneered at him. Who does he think he is? Isn't that the carpenter's son? <coughs> Isn't that Tamar's, Ruth's, Jacob's, Aminadab's boy? In Advent, we wait for a Messiah who will deliver us from our humanity, from the condition that has always trapped us and, and traps us even now. Then to our surprise, he comes to us the way God always does, as one of us. 
embracing our humanity and our history, calling us to become part of that promise. As we look over into the manger of the baby Jesus and we ask the question, who are his people? Matthew answers, you know his people, Abraham, Jacob, Tamar, Ruth, and all the rest. And you, you are his people. So know this, this Christmas morning, God loves you. You are part of his family and God includes you. Uh, Will Willman has summed up the gospel story, the good news in these seven words. God refuses to be God without us. Think about that. God refuses to be God without us. And that's what Christmas is about. God loved us so much that he sent his son. Amen. We have gone through Advent, and today we light the Christ candle. Okay. Uh, and I had more to say about the Christ candle, but uh, I'm going to... It represents Christ's presence with us on Christmas Eve coming into our world. Um, this is from a retired United Methodist minister in Texas named Fred Winslow. He described a scene of, uh, in Hospital Room 525 at Texas Methodist Hospital. The people are a 72-year-old heart patient and a night nurse. This was December 1st, 2019, and Fred Winslow says, I am a fall risk. It's irritating because I have to call the nurse each and every time I want to shuffle 12 steps to the bathroom. I have to call three or four times a night. One night I hit the red button, the duty nurse, and, and myself cleared up the two or three tubes and electrodes on my body, and she guided my IV pole, and in unison, we began our little parade to the bathroom. My gown flapped, flapped open in the back and she discreetly held it closed. Why do you help 72 year old guys whose hospital gowns expose their backside? You're a fall risk, she said. I'm sorry, but I meant you, you come down to my room 525 three or four times to help me shuffle 12 steps. It can't be fun and I'm embarrassed about my situation. She says, Mr. Winslow, I want you to work. I want to work to get you better so you can go home. It brings me joy to see you get well and go home. With tears in my eyes, I said, thank you. I do want to get well. I can't believe the number of people here with that goal for me. And with tears in her eyes, she said, thank you. In the Christmas season 2019, an angel sent from God grabbed my IV pole and our little parade returned to my bed. God is coming. God is here. The word, this word is the good news. And suddenly there was with Fred an angel in room 525 who said, See, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. A child is born who saves you. So the Christ candle represents Christ coming into our world so that then we may pass that light on to others. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, if you've got a candle, would you stand? We're going to fly our candles and spread that light back through the room. Uh, Charlie? Yes. You want to light first and then just... Maybe like uh, Sue and, and then uh, Dorothy, and then you just pass your light one at a time on to the, the next person. So I'm symbolically lighting off the Christ candle, maybe.
Merry Christmas. If, uh, enjoy your friends and family. May the light that began at creation continue through the witness of the prophets and has come to full come to fullness at the birth of Jesus Christ be in your hearts and your minds on this Christmas Eve day. As you go from this place, may your spirits be filled with joy and hope for God's precious light has been given to you and for you. Go in peace and know that God's peace always goes with you. We go, go forward. forward. We go forward. We go forward. We go forward.